Hello and welcome. This is episode 10 of the Branching Factor podcast. I'm your host, Tommy Thompson, and we're back with more ramblings in and around the world of video games. For those not familiar, Branching Factor is a podcast trying to demystify the realities of working in and around games. And so for this episode, we're kind of concluding our summer program of weird and sort of um, slightly out there topics. So in our previous episode... Uh, it was a recording of when I was at the AI and Games Summer School uh, earlier in the year, and I was hosting a panel with a variety of industry colleagues. By all means, if you haven't listened to it, go back and check that out. I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, for this episode, it's actually a recording that I ran with our mutual friend and fellow co-host of the podcast, George Osborne, while we were at Develop. For those not familiar, Develop is the biggest video game development conference uh, in the United Kingdom. So if you're based outside the UK, you might have heard of, for example, GDC, which is the big game developers conference that runs out in San Francisco. This is a much, much, much smaller version of that same kind of event, but it is very much exclusively, or not necessarily exclusively, but it is, it is aimed for the British games industry and to allow for a lot of developers to attend. And so both George and I were there for a couple of days. In fact, George was only there for one day. And while we were flying or taking the train down to Brighton, which is right on the south coast of England, he'd said to me, oh, hey, we should totally record an episode of the podcast. So I'm... I went down there complete with the GoPro and microphones and it wound up by virtue of it being a seaside town. It's very windy. And so we ended up sitting outside a coffee shop um, slightly off of the waterfront in Brighton. So my apologies in advance if you do hear a little bit of noise coming both from the wind, but also uh, from a lot of the traffic that passes by. Uh, in our conversation, we talked a lot about what it means to go to an event like this and critically what is the inherent value for someone looking to attend a games industry event and I think critically for a lot of people who are perhaps a little new to this space or you're perhaps working for yourself and you're trying to build a reputation for yourself we were giving a lot of reflecting on a lot of our own decisions and also the, the advice that we had received over the years but on top of this we end up talking a little bit more about our realities in hustling or, or bustling around the games industry, uh, the reality of running community events and the values that those bring. But we also talk a little bit about George's work uh, in charity fundraising um, over at Games Aid and the actually how important going to the likes of Develop is for these kinds of charities to support people um, because of the amount, the number of fundraisers that are hosted in and around uh, an opportunity like this where so many people in the games industry are congregated. And yeah, I hope you have fun listening to it. We had fun recording it, and I'll catch you all later. All right. May as well yep. kick it off. This looks like it's recording. Sure. Um, yeah. I'm also, you know that way I'm conscious of like not putting it too far away. Yeah, yeah. In case some fucker just comes up there. Just, just <laughs> basically yoinks it. Yoinks it. He's like, like ooh, free GoPro. You know, I, I think in terms of some fucker, uh, in Brighton, it would be less likely to be a person and more likely to be a, a seagull. Pigeon or a seagull. Someone. Giant just, seagull. Just being like, that's an odd shape. Make sure, let's go for this. Make sure we don't have any salt or vinegar on it. Oh, okay. I think yeah, that's absolutely, pretty Absolutely, yes. I mean, uh, yeah. Nightmare. So here we are. Um, yep. Hello, everyone. This is the impromptu episode of Branching Factor, live from Develop 2023. Uh, not quite at the venue, because the venue is absolute chaos. Yep. It's down at the Hilton on the waterfront. Um, so we're a couple of blocks away, and uh, George and I both just came into town. You're fresh off the train this morning. Yep. Straight off the boat, straight into the into the carnage that is Develop. No, actually, Develop is super friendly I think yeah. it, it's one of those things where I talk to a lot of people outside of games about how do you how do you get to understand the games industry right in the UK and my number one recommendation is if you want to do that come to develop for a bit it's busy it's a little bit mad but it's very informal very easy very relaxed you just end up in Brighton chatting to a load of people in the games industry yeah um, funnily enough I uh, was chatting with someone who was saying they went to one of the so there's like an opening panel that runs every morning of like hey if this is your first time coming to a conference like this how do you how do you get the most out of the yeah. experience and one of the bits of feedback that they got is do not treat this as a transactional thing so you know sure you're maybe here wanting to demo your indie game or you're a student looking to get a job or 
you know, you're pitching for funding for your next project. It's like, sure, everyone's coming into this with a tr- with an, a, an agenda, with a goal. Like, you're here doing work yep. and your charity work as well, which we can talk about in a little bit. Yeah. Me, I'm here in business, doing meetings and everything. But at the end of the day, make sure there's not one of my things that's just blown away there. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it's also a social. It's also just an opportunity to catch up with a lot of people. And even already, like, on the way, I came in last night. I got here about 6.30. Yeah. And I was heading down to the hotel because I thought, oh, the drinks mixer will be on. I'll yeah. just go down and see who's there. And I bumped into about three people on the way there. Yeah. I bumped into about a dozen people at the event. And then someone, I was meeting up with someone who I'm sharing an Airbnb with. And they said, oh, meet me at this place. Yeah. And I bumped into another three people on the way from the hotel to yeah. that. And a lot of them, it's, oh, you're going to be around tomorrow. Let's try and grab a coffee. Or That's maybe we have a more formal meeting. But um, yeah, it's just... It's nice to see everyone. And then when you're in the expo floor, you remind yourself, why do we do this again? Like, it's nice to see everyone, but we put ourselves in these, like, horrible containers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it goes back to something else that I think... I can't remember who told me this about the industry, but I can remember stealing it off them because I think it was a very good way of thinking about it, (laughs) is that if you look at the number of people who work in the UK games industry, just simply from, like, a count of, right... How many, how many people are estimated to work in, in the sector and across yeah. it? 50 to 70K? So you're talking about the size of a parliamentary constituency. So what that means is the games industry feels a bit like a village, right? Everyone knows each other, everyone knows what's going on. So that means if you go and get a whole load of the industry to congregate in one place, Actually, it's going to be much, much more about sharing gossip, catching up, seeing friends, and then business comes up, right? And sometimes you will be sitting with someone directly pitching them for a business thing. But for the most part, it's one of those moments where you get to actually catch up with your mates, yeah. talk to people. And frankly, the industry culture is very nice. I know that sometimes the industry doesn't always maybe sort of always feel like it or always talk about itself like that but no. trust me having worked in advertising having worked in sport and having worked in tech it's one of the friendliest places around so often business comes off the fact that actually you just get along with someone well and yeah. you find a good common yeah. piece of ground to work on so yes you can still go and do the let's go and look at all the stands and try and chat to people there and that's completely sensible but I think at the same time, just, just come in and meet people. Just be there, be present. Yeah, I mean, even back when I was lecturing, I, I, I like how it sounds like, oh, many moons ago, I only quit that job like 10 months ago. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one of the things I used to always advocate to students and the like is, you know, come to these events, go to go to things like, uh, in the UK, I guess, you've got EGX now, WAS, and, and WASD as well. Yeah. Go to these kind of game developer events, events or gaming events where you know developers will congregate as well as things like develop and just meet people don't be a dick yeah and that's my number one thing is just don't be a dick because you never know how easily that spreads and like sort of oh hey like you met such and such at this event and you were speaking ill of this company yeah or speaking ill of this game and now you're interviewing at the studio where I was the creative director on that game that you yeah, referred to and maybe. then these things can come back and bite you in like the silliest of ways but also I think even from my perspective like I'm quite fortunate that a lot of work comes my way without me really pitching for it having a YouTube presence is helpful in that regard but also a lot of people who it's just oh we remember you from such and such are you, a, are you free at the moment we've got a thing coming up figured this might be something that's your cup of tea and, yeah. and that's really nice and also just having nice people like George point people at you as well because um, funnily enough like I don't know if we've ever talked about it on the podcast but the fact that you and I were hanging out at a barbecue at Nickel Hunt's back garden yeah. and you turned around and said to me why are you not doing consultancy for the games industry and like that's actually your job instead of lecturing and then yeah. like fast forward less than a year that happened without any impetus on my end actually companies came to me and I'm like well you're horribly right thank you <laughs> well I, I do love to be right I think that's that's one of the and you tend things. to be right which uh, is you know uh, which, which, you're good at being right which is uh, I, I'm good at being right sometimes so I'm, I'm willing <laughs> I'm willing to take the win on this one but I think what you're touching on there as well I think it's just I think there's a really important difference between being sort of potentially or seeing things as being maybe sort of too insular or solely about your network or networking 
Whereas actually, like we need to look at events like this at is about just relationship building. Yeah. And you know, I think often people look at it and go, well, why do I need to do that if I've got the right product, the right kind of thing? It's like surely that will sell. And like sometimes, yeah, if you've got a great idea or you've got a great service or things like that, and it's a knockout pitch for someone and they need it, fantastic. But if you're going into a situation where you're meeting potentially a future employer, a future funder, someone who may well work with your business or service further down the line, they're going to have to take a risk on you somewhere. Yeah. And they're going to have to take a risk on you whether they're the person who says, we should hire this person, whether they're the person who says, I would like to dip X hundred thousands of pounds into this project, or I'd like to use this service over these other three for this reason. And so the reason why you want to build relationships is because you're trying to build trust and you're trying to build that sense amongst people that you are and you are someone who can essentially be trusted to do what you need to do to deliver on what you are and as you say to be the kind of person who people want to work with yeah and so i think it's really important to come to events like this because it's a way for you to build and foster that trust but it's also just a way for you to actually go and make sure that you really learn how to do that for the future onwards you know i think yeah. you're actually going and sitting and talking with lots of different people understanding that people have lots of different lives lots of different motivations lots of different backgrounds being able to sit there and go I understand where you're coming from, even if you're not the right fit for me in terms of business or this, that, and the other, is the kind of thing that sets you up much, much further down the line to be able to be like, suddenly this thing has become relevant. And I know the right Jeez, and what was a, that? I, We've just got some solid backfire there. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it's like, look at these kinds of things as your opportunity to build those relationships yeah. because yeah. relationships do kind of make the world go around. Indeed. Um, and it's interesting, like, I think also for, um, like previously, I guess, like so, you know, now you're at, you, currently you're at Tasso Advisory. Prior to that, you were at UK, and then that meant you were often kind of this, like, you were kind of a figurehead of like the public presence of the games industry in, in some regard, because you were often out there responding to political discourse or things that are happening in the press and what have you. And so it was good for you to go out and network. And I think to an extent that's still true for you because you are have to know what's going on in the industry. And also it's good for people to know who you are as well. Because it's like, oh, George Osborne. I've seen that guy's name kicking about. And for all the right reasons, not the... I'm, I'm not, not, not the other guy. Not no, the other guy. It's very much, very much keeping my distance he's, from he's, the other guy. He's very much no longer in vogue, which is good. Yeah. But, but it is, it's like, oh, hey, like we've seen this guy over at, you know, at UK now, at Tasso, yeah. like you're coming out and s making statements or, and what have you. And it's like, oh, right, that's yeah. him. Cool, it's nice to meet him. And also, I think that's great, great for people to... S there's a bit of sizing up going on. It's like, yeah. is this guy actually legitimate? And, and like, I get the same thing as, you know, being a YouTuber. <laughs> um, who then people go, that's the guy from YouTube. And then they come over and have... And that happened a couple of times already today. And I'm having that conversation in the yard. They're like, oh, no, he seems... Yeah. He seems like he's got his head screwed on, his, you know, uh, feet on the ground sort of thing. Um, and then, and that's interesting because you're dealing with, so funnily enough, I bumped into Mark Brown earlier yeah. uh, from Game Makers Toolkit. And much like at GDC, um, we couldn't stay in one space for too long no. because it creates a fire hazard as people spot Mark and then want to go over and talk to him. And it's yeah. interesting dealing with those two differentials of like developers who go, hey, we know you from YouTube and want to have a conversation from other people who are, you're that guy on YouTube. And they're trying to just kind of size you up potentially yeah. for like a, a business interaction down the line or whatever else. So there's, it is, it's like that kind of social cachet that you need to build yeah. with different people, um, I think is, is really valuable. And even a lot of stuff that even actually in the last year that I've been doing hasn't came directly yeah. from develop, but you find out later on, you meet people in certain companies you're working with and you begin to figure out there might have been a lot of indirect influences off the back of, say last year I gave a talk here. Yeah. And I literally met someone last night who was, you gave a talk last year, didn't you? And I'm like, yeah. yes, in a kind of fugue state because it was incredibly warm. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I remember that talk. And I'm like, wow, okay. So, you know, building that that social currency. Yeah, what completely. Happened. And I think, you know, there is quite a lot of good literature out there about like decision making, about how people arrive at their decisions. And it's very rarely one single moment where something just completely converts all the way down the funnel from I need to do this thing to mm -hmm. I do this thing. There's all of the kind of stuff that they're conscious of, the meetings they've had, the people they've spoken to, or, you know, the things they know they've seen, and then the unconscious, you know, that sort of sense of maybe I saw something on the side of a bus, maybe I heard someone talk about this somewhere, somewhere else, and it's kind of lodged into my mind, you know. Yeah. And I think 
And that's a really good way to think about events and activities like these kinds of events is to be like, this is your way of building those kinds of moments so that when maybe someone further down the line thinks about it, they're thinking, I need to think of you. But yeah, go, going back as well to that, that sense of being that point of contact between the wider world and the industry, I, I think it, it again goes down to that sense of relationships built and trust. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that was a real challenge when I started out at UQ was that I think people didn't trust the industry and they didn't initially trust me because people outside of games didn't know who I was, right? So they were like, you're that person at UQ, so you are representing the video games industry, which does evil things like make kids addicted to video games and this, that and the other. And so a lot of my, especially my first year at UQ was about building trust, like going out and meeting people mm -hmm. and talking to people, but doing the things like, yes, I mean, relationship building is really important, but I think demonstrating you've got the knowledge, like if you're worried, yeah. like thinking like knowledge is not enough, nope, knowledge is definitely needed. I think that's that's there. But then the other thing is just the professionalism. Yes. Like being able to sit there and, you know, at various points for whatever reason, people have contacted UQ many years ago and not got responses from the comms team on like a press request. And then as a result of that, they've gone, well, we can't contact them on anything. Whereas for me, it was very much like, okay, a press request comes in. We triage it as quickly as possible to either give them a clear answer that we're not doing something or give them a clear answer of when we're going to do something and just let them know why. And then what happens <coughs> is you just build the trust and then when they need to talk to someone and someone goes, oh, do you know anyone in the games industry? They go, I know George, right? And like, yeah. that's, that's kind of how you do it. And I think you should see something like develop as that kind of bridgehead, right? It's your opportunity to go and do that kind of thing, to demonstrate you can build those relationships, but also that you have got the knowledge and the trustworthiness and the, and the capacity for, as professionals to go out and deliver, yeah. which makes it all sound very serious. It does, but, but... I don't think it is. No, it's, you know, I think there's an element of just being your authentic self. Yeah. Um, I mean, we already said, don't be a dick. I mean, that's that's fair. So if you if you're not do, if you're not being a dick, if you're generally a, a nice person, and we're going to assume most of you who are watching and listening are because, you know, you listen to us. So clearly, you're good people. But if you come present your authentic self, and then. I think, yeah, like that allows for people to say, you know what, that was a good interaction with, even if it was like something completely benign and yeah. having a joke about something, but and having just a bit of a casual conversation, like, All right, okay, they seem cool. Yeah. It's, it's funny though, you were talking about kind of showcasing knowledge and, and showing that you can present yourself in that kind of capacity. Like I was chatting with a, a, a mutual friend of ours whose name will remain, uh, Stricken from the record. Stricken from the record until the end of the recording. Because um, they were they are doing a lot more professional training with games companies. And yeah. they were sort of, hey, one of the things they were concerned about is they were thinking of doing webinars and stuff and about yeah. sharing their knowledge in, a, in, a, yeah. in, in that virtual sense. And they said, well, do you feel like that's a threat then to doing one-to-one -one things with companies? And yeah. I said, it took me a little while to figure out the answer is no. Yeah. Um, because one of the things that actually they value is they see your stuff online and this happens with me um, a lot of the time with YouTube now is people watch my YouTube videos and they go this guy seems to know his stuff yeah. and if they really then they meet me in person and they sort of realize that I'm just every episode of AI and Games compiled into yeah. one person but also the other 50 episodes that have not yet been made and so we can have a conversation in which I can lift off things that hey go and watch that video that I made but also like I can talk about the subject yeah. in a more broader sense and then that is they, they come off the back of that and they go that's why we want to hire that guy because yeah. um, they could sit and watch all 70 and at the time of this recording, episode 72 goes out this week. They could watch all 72 episodes of AI and games. And some people will do that. Some people yeah. who don't have that financial runway will just go, I'm going to watch all those videos, take what I can from it and apply it to my own projects. Yeah. And then other companies will go, screw that, let's hire the guy because he has all this information available to him. And yeah, like I think it's interesting being in that space now where I'm interacting with people and they're going, oh wow, so he actually does know all this stuff. Yeah. That's a really useful value for us and actually can present himself in an intelligent way and is able to communicate in a way that doesn't require an ed a PhD background in the subject matter. Um, yeah. you know, we were talking about this offline uh, before we started, but generative AI, I'm getting a lot of, in fact, thanks to you, I literally got interviewed with the BBC last week um, <laughs> about generative AI for games, because everyone's like, oh, there's so much noise and hype around yeah. this, and we just need someone to give us like a level-headed perspective on it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's, 
it's nice to be able to come in and just present yourself in a way that people afterwards will then be able to see your other work, particularly in both of our yeah. cases, because we were kind of in a public forum, yeah. being able to say, okay, no, I actually can respect and, and believe what is being said by these people because I have a, I, I trust having met them in person like yeah they seem legit yeah and I think I, I mean if anyone wants to read some I, I, it's a little bit corporate but I think it was a good read I was reading something about um, content marketing from the agency Edelman and they were doing about how do you develop business during a tough business environment using like content marketing things um, it's an interesting report because you know what they're saying is like people are obviously cutting back budgets and they're trying to work out how they make decisions but one of the things they, they want to see is that people understand what they're talking about. But it's like, if you don't talk about the things you know, how does anyone know you know it? Right? Yeah. And so, essentially, uh, you know, I can't remember the, the precise figures off the top of the head, but good content, videos, podcasts, text content, behind a paywall, however you want to do it, <coughs> people access it and their first thought is not job done. A lot of the time, their first thought is actually is there something else we can do here? Because almost all of the time, and I think this is one of the things to really think about mechanically when thinking about this as well, is like how much time, whether you've released a report or whether you've given a talk, how much time have you actually had to show your full expertise and to go in depth to the level that people actually might need it? Because for the most part, most people need somewhere to get them started. Mm -hmm. And then once they've got started, they go, right, now I'm started, I know where I need to go next. So a 30 minute talk, for example, two and a half thousand words, tops. Yeah. Now two and a half thousand words does not contain the full insides of your head on AI, yeah. right? And so that means that if someone listens to your talk and goes, there's something in there that's really useful and valuable to me, what they're not gonna think is like, job done. They're gonna go, I wanna talk to you about it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, that's the other thing as well, it's like, just generally speaking, like knowledge sharing, information, I mean, even just news, it is the things that we as humans value in terms of understanding what's going on in the world and what's going on in our communities. So if you can be the person who can provide that kind of information in an open and informative way, you know, that's going to provide you more value than worrying too much about if you've given away the house. Because yeah. actually, for the most part, you're very far away from giving away the house. Yeah. You've mostly just shown some nice pictures of it on the internet. So, you know, it's like, that's, that's kind of, I think, the way to think about it. And to think about these kinds of events as saying, it's an opportunity for you to do that in small form in conversation. But I think just one of the other things as well is to, and this is something that took me a, a, a bit of time to fully learn and appreciate myself because I was, um, well, a white male. Uh, listen more. Yes. Listen more, speak less. <coughs> and when someone asks you for help on something, help them on that thing. Even if helping them on that thing is going, I don't know how to help you. Yeah. But maybe this person could. Because yes, yes, even just yes. doing that will mean that when eventually they come back to the thing that you can help them on, both people, the person you connected and the person you connected them to, will remember you did that. Yeah. And again, that big, when you see it from that perspective, it begins to sound transactional again. But in the moment, that isn't what was happening. You were saying, I actually don't know how to solve this problem for you, but I actually do know someone yeah. that might be worth you talking to. Because you're also thinking, oh, hey, well, I want to help everybody out, yeah. make sure everyone gets on all right. And then subsequently, yeah, that, again, it builds your uh, reputation and, and that kind of cachet among, among people. And yeah, like everyone, you know, I'm a big fan of just helping other people out whenever you can. Like, yeah. you know, I spent 10 years teaching people, so I'm a big fan of trying to elevate people to <laughs> something of a higher, you know, to, to go for a goal. Um, yeah. And so particularly when you meet a lot of people um, here, like already actually in the last day or so, I was talking to people who are like, oh, hey, I, I'm, I'm finished up a contract. I don't have any work coming in at the moment. Like, well, I was just chatting with these two people yeah. who I know who are currently hiring for a thing. Yeah. Um, and so either you know who they are, so go and find them, or if not, this is them on Twitter, go and DM yeah. them and say that I said hello sort of thing. And so, yeah, it's, and you know, that's often how these things can emerge very quickly for people is, yeah. um, there's, a, there's often fewer things mightier than a quick verbal intro yes. or a two line email. Yeah. Just saying, you two should talk. 
because that is often especially if you've got that kind of trust and credibility and reputation for being helpful <coughs> and consistent I think which again are just two other massive qualities in this then yeah people, people end up helping you out and I think uh, you know talking a little bit about what I'm doing down here as well so you know one, one of the things I do in my spare time alongside my, my job is I, I co-run the industry <coughs> charity games page yeah. and a big part of what we're doing is about trying to find every single possible way that people can help us in what we're doing Yeah. because one of the big things about running a not-for-profit and trying to fundraise as we do for a load of children's charities that the industry supports is to say everything that someone can do to help us outside of their sort of usual day job and things like that yeah. can make a massive difference yeah. and it might be someone signing off on a massive sponsorship for an event or buying a table to one of our big dinners but equally just getting to that point where people know us well enough and value the work that we're doing and trust us enough to deliver on like, it that they go I'm going to share a tweet about yeah, it yeah I was going right? to say like a, a retweet could uh, can be just as valuable if you're completely um, and yeah like so it's funny because I mean one you've got the, the Games Aid which you've got an event um, is it tonight? So we've had, we've had quite a few things. So yeah, last night, um, so one of our ambassadors, a gentleman called Mark Ward, has been running a sort of an annual poker night. Uh, oh yes, I forgot the poker night was last night. So it was. Yeah, so uh, they was managed a mutual to, friend, Andrew Roper, lost a lot of money. Lost, lost a lot of money. <laughs> and I'd like, to, I'd like to make it clear for, for the tape as well that this was uh, all money that went to charity. Oh yeah, it's all uh, for so a good cause. All so for a good cause. I'm happy and, you take his money. <laughs> exactly. Um, but so, uh, you know, we ended up raising £7,000 from that last night. Oh, amazing. Um, and it means historically, I think since it's started it's raised over 60k for the charity and Mark just does this in his spare time he gets some industry companies to sponsor all the kit he gets the venue to give us a room and then off we go right um, but across the rest of it you know we're basically doing this big tombola in the expo area so people who have a bit of free time yes, and some I saw that. free pennies can basically win themselves some prizes we are doing like a big raffle over at the keywords party tonight and then I'm going on stage at the awards uh, the main developer awards to go and just do a little bit of promotional work and then go around the venue you know selling people access to the funny money that they can use to uh, access the evening entertainment basically so it's, it's a variety of things but you know the idea is that if you add all of those things up you know realistically you get to the point where it's 15 to 20 thousand pounds for charity and if you bear in mind that last year once we had netted everything out we distributed 120 thousand pounds to our charity of choice it's a serious chunk of money and it makes yeah. a real difference so yeah develops huge for us and I get, you know, funnily enough, bringing it back to the earlier conversation, like the ability for you to do that and for people to be on board with it comes down to years of networking and engagement with not just yourself, but you know, but you know, you're kind of in a senior position at Games Aid, but everybody on that team yeah. had, has helped Games Aid build a reputation yeah. that, and now you know, people are excited for you know, uh, talking, you know, chatting to people in advance. Like, oh, I'm going to go to the poker thing on the Tuesday night because yeah. it becomes a staple of the of the week. Yeah. Um, which is great and um, and it's also funny because it's not it wasn't directly Games Aid related but that was funnily enough how we met yeah because the first time we actually met was the London 10k yes. special effect run correct yeah. which I found a, I found photographs of that on yeah. my phone this week doing the this time X years ago yeah because we were all because Roper and I dressed up yeah um, and I was like oh yeah yeah and then that was it that was literally how, how we met because I bumped, bumped into yourself and then I met Nicole Hunt yeah. like the week before or something and then yeah. we ended up running the Hitchin Indies meet up for several years yeah, yeah. off the back until the pandemic we happened yeah. um, we need to get Nickel on the show at some point I we think. do we do he's a, he's a funny guy and he's, he's also um, I think the game that he was working on for Space Ape uh, has just released so I think the thing that he has been squirreling away on for the best part of three or four years is finally out in the wild so Ooh. I think it's a, it's a good time I think to have a good chat with our mate, our, our mate Nickel. Our it's, mate Nickel. Yeah, we should, we should, we should just have everybody around the house. Yeah, we'll get a big apple crumble. Yeah, yeah. we all right, right, kind of going back to the Hitch and Indies days. Like for context, everyone, like was it the very first time we met up in a pub, and then. We shared a dessert. You shared a dessert together. You two shared an apple crumble because I don't think either of you could eat a whole one. But you know, no. like, oh, let's just share one. And I took a photo of it, and then that just became a thing. It became a meme. Yeah, yeah it, it's very much a Nickel and George's dessert. And I think. Um, and then we had the one Christmas. The, uh, the Christmas. The, the Christmas. Hitchened uh, over yours. Right? Hi, uh, Hitchbow. That Hitchbow. was it. Happy Hitchbow. Hitchbow. Yeah, yeah, Happy Hitchbow, where we had it at, at my house. Yeah. And uh, my partner made this massive yeah. <laughs> apple crumble. Um, I'll need to find the photos and share them if I can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was. 
I miss running that as well, even though because we were we ac- we advertised it as like a, a meetup for game yeah. developers in the local area, and it usually turned into you, me, Nickel, and maybe three or four other people. Yes, most and of them we already knew. Most of them we knew, but sometimes as well you would end up with with people who came along for the first time because they'd heard of it. But it kind of it's it's funny because I c- I can also sort of see the link back to everything else that we're talking about, which is about these are places where communities build, mm. and if you can build a nice community and bring things together, like what happens is that if you're trying to do anything by yourself, anything in life, it's really hard to do anything in your life by yourself. Right? Without any kind of sport, you can do it, but God, it's difficult. Right? We all know this, it's a right pain in the backside. But so to instead, even if you're just bringing people together to talk, like what, we were just pretty much just a talking shop. We just chatted about stuff that was going on. Yeah. We had desserts because why wouldn't we have desserts? Of course, right? But you know, it was that it built that sense of community, and uh, you know, like I mean, us talking about it here. But there, there were people who have went to loads of them who I bump into them at events. I'm still like, do you remember when we did that and we built that thing? And so I think it's like looking at these kinds of activities and events as that space for you to go. I can build my own community and yeah. be part of a wider community at the same time. It's just like, and it, I think it's well worth, especially in terms of like meetups and things like that. Even if, even if what you're doing is running a regular Mario Kart group, which I've not, I've not joined that. So I was going to say, like speaking of, yeah. I did attend our Mario Kart group yesterday. We're only th- four of us logged in, yeah, um, because uh, a couple of are on break, yeah. and then several folk from the from the group are here yeah. at Develop. I know several. Several people actually brought their switches with them because so the new DLC it. dropped today. God, <laughs> how have I how have I missed this? I'm gonna have to. This uh, is DLC drop five or something. Yeah, like that. It's, it's the fifth, fifth, um, fifth set. But yeah, added some more characters, Tommy. They've added three more characters, three more, and characters. Eight more tracks. Oh my oh god. god, very exciting. Um, and we're gonna hate all of them very very soon. Yeah, because I, I mean, like, <laughs> what will happen is, is that especially as I remember sort of being in the group, is the rotation for probably the next two to three weeks will just be the new tracks. I was going to say, like, usually the first session when the new track drops, it, that is it. The, the eight tracks we, the eight races yeah. we do, are the eight tracks from the new DLC. Yeah. And then it's like seven, six, four. Yeah, you begin to see. Oh, right, actually, none yeah. of that trophy is in yeah. content, is in is in the the playlist anymore. Yeah, and I I, I think it's like you know, um, I don't want to be. But Baby wanna, Park is still there. Well, this is the thing is that, I, I, you know, especially you don't want to be sort of too critical because it's lovely to have lots of lovely tracks, but I felt that with a lot of the DLC tracks, the leaning into the tour tracks, yes. which feel as if they are, they, I mean, they, they're literally designed for everything from like a different screen ratio to yeah. and a screen aspect to just feeling like they're designed quite fundamentally differently and not in line with how previous Mario Kart games have been designed. I think it reduces the number of tracks that you really want in the rotation from yeah. the new ones. Whereas something like Mount Wario, Mount Wario is a banger. So it's always been a banger, it always will be. And there's still a few from the older uh, the older Mario ga- Mario Karts where I'm still like, why haven't they brought that one back? Yeah. And, um, DK Mountain on actually DK Mountain in the GameCube is like my yeah uh, that's my white whale that's the one that that's I really one. want in at some point it's the one you're hunting down but but they haven't done it yet but there's a couple of them that are actually pretty good and I quite like was it they did the oh, I forget the name of the, the track it's the the train from Mario 64 uh, Calamari Desert Calamari Desert that's it um, they, they redid it they yeah. reworked it so it plays differently now versus yeah. when it did on the on the N64 and I was like oh that's kind of neat yeah but, and, and, and it had a light uh, so there was there was definitely uh, I don't want to say like a full blown sort of hack or skip but on the N64 one there was always if you could get an invincibility star and drive through the tunnel you could skip quite a large section of a lap and yeah. get, get ahead and I think what they did in terms of reconfiguring it is they said okay well let's just chuck that into like let's just make it the part, one lap the race, is, right and I, yeah. I think it's like a smart like redesign and rejig but again just a lovely little community like we you know how much that matters we're, good we're uh, we, well, that community was founded by you, yeah. funnily enough. Yeah, it was. Um, and then it was like, Tommy, can you help me run the Discord server? Because I don't know what all the buttons are for Discord yeah. servers. And I'm like, okay, I've done that. That's um, absolutely. And I'm... it's been going now for just over three years. Well, and I've barely been in it. It's just been like, ah, it's work meetings, isn't it? It's just lunch times. I think Damn it. there's not many of us that still, actually, I think not that long ago, I think... Uh, 
Lucas and Helen had to break their respective streaks of however many weeks that they'd managed to go. I think, I think it was a couple of years maybe they'd managed to go yeah. without missing one and then they missed some. Um, but yeah, I think because we're all out in the world a bit more, everyone's yeah. a bit more active and so yeah, there's even a couple of, I was going to say actually, I made Tuesday this week yeah. Um, I made both last week, but then I didn't make any for the two weeks prior to that. Yeah. So it's like I kind of come in for a bit and then I come out again. But it's nice to have that space that is somehow still going. Yeah. And even, I think it's only been abandoned once or twice when there was literally two people or something. Yes, I, that that's it. it. I'm still, I'm genuinely impressed that it remains going three years after the start of COVID. Yeah. You know, by three and a bit years, actually. Right? Yep. The more yep. I think about it, wow, there we go. Build, we build things to last, even if, <laughs> even if we don't actually necessarily, you know, hang out actually in Actually participate in it. We, we built to last. But, it's, uh, but no, um, I think that comes down to the people as well, because it was a lot of mutuals. Yeah. That there wasn't that many people that joined who didn't know someone already yeah. I think almost everyone was like oh I know Tommy or I know George or they know Helen or Lucas or, or whatever um, and yet yeah, that was how it fostered and I think there is a there's a nice sense of camaraderie with it even if it's even if we drive each other nuts yes like especially, nobody, especially nobody's really especially. friendly with each other during no during the race but then once it's done it's very much just like what is done is done mm. let's move on with our lives let's pretend that the tree King didn't happen. <laughs> that's the, int the introduction of a soundboard into Discord has oh, proven. That's uh, I can only imagine the kind of chaos. There's that. actually a clip of uh, what is it? Um, so Isaac one time had a meltdown at the end of a race. I think it might have been on Mount Wario. Okay. And he was so annoyed, he went off into a little rant. And um, there was one bit of it that was really good. It's now been clipped and is now a soundbite on I mean, the soundboard of the sound. I mean, I've, I've not actually heard that, but I think I'm probably going to go straight into it to go and give myself a little bit of a go on the soundboard there. <laughs> just to see, just to see, see what he was like. Bless him. God bless him. Yeah. Nat feels drunk on power, I think, with the... Also, Nat's in too many Discord servers. I think that's the problem. As they should be. I mean, you know, both both in terms of being drunk on power and being there, there's never such a thing as too many Discord servers, except for there clearly is, and that's that's part of the reason I'm why no, I use Discord. I'm now very grateful that my Discord server doesn't have a lot of voice chat going on in it. Yeah, I think that's yeah. I, 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 we're, a, we're a text chat community. It yes, seems. and I, I think that, that that's quite nice. I think yeah. it's quite nice. <laughs> a little little quieter, literally don't have to worry about god knows what noise is being made god knows exactly but yeah so what's what's the rest of so you, how long are you here until actually today just today today yeah i'm flying basically uh first train in last train out kind of situation um, yes uh which is which is unusual and I, I probably wouldn't recommend it for the most part but, you know work is work i was originally like, planning to only be here tomorrow yeah um, but then, so I've got, because I've got a bunch of meetings tomorrow, and then I ended up with another m couple of meetings this afternoon. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, hey, I'm going to be in on Wednesday. I'm like, all right, let's just hang out. And then you were like, let's just let's record an episode while we're here. Why not? Like, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, funnily enough, I was about to do the same thing. And then my problem was I'd made zero travel plans. Yeah. And so late last week, I was like, crap, I yeah. need to get to develop yeah. and have accommodation. And yeah. all that jazz and I was fortunate in that I had a friend who's got an, who had already booked into an Airbnb nice. and they thought oh, there's a sofa bed on that you can crash I'm like oh thank god because I just looked at the hotels accommodations the night oh night god night. I went on like booking.com and it was just like hotels in Brighton at yeah. these dates and you could like, just you like you know, it, shows you, it shows you what the average <laughs> price is and it's like oh £40 a night £50 a night £60 a night £70 a night £180 <laughs> and it's like oh my god oh no yes. <laughs> what have I done here <laughs> But meanwhile, I'm like already planning my GDC out, planning my flights and my yeah, hotel for GDC absolutely. at this moment. Absolutely. Well, like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, uh, yeah, it's that is the one thing I would say. If you are thinking about coming to these events and you've not been before, get the accommodation done early. Like, yes. Get it. Get out. Put down. Go on to Booking.com. Even if you're not paying, in the, uh, you know, in advance, just get yep. that booking in as early as you can. Once they announce the dates, there you go. You can cancel it if you get nearer the time. But good lord, if you try and book the accommodation late, it's not great. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, 
that's, so that's me exploiting my own knowledge because I'm on the advisory board at GDC, so I yeah. know when GDC Absolutely. runs next year. Yeah, that's that's it. Like, <laughs> no, if you've got any insider intel, it's mostly useful for saving you money like, on hotels. Get in there now. Exactly. Get exactly. Get in Skyscanner and get those <laughs> get, get get those first class flights booked at the same price that people will be paying for normal. So I, funnily enough, months. actually, what happened was so I had a um, as folks who watch my vlog on going to GDC will know. I had a horrid time getting there. Yeah. My original flight got cancelled, and then I ended up having to take a, a, I had to take a flight to New York, yeah. have a layover, yeah. and then get like the first flight yeah. straight out of. Um, I've actually done that before as well. It was not fun. No. So I got to GDC. I arrived in, in downtown San Francisco at like 11 in the morning, yeah. and I'm like, oh god, here we go. I'd slept about two hours or something in the hotel that I crashed in on the layover. Yeah. Um, but then I was able to claim the entire flight back yeah. because customer service was actually pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, and so I immediately I got the money back. Brilliant. Went back on the website and I booked next year's next flight. Year's flight. So you're very much just like, thank you very much. Sorted. Right. That's next year covered. Love this um, stuff. So, but yes, book early. Book um, early. Book off. But I, guess, I mean, I guess it's not too bad for yourself given you live, you, you live in London. Yep. So it's only... Yeah, I mean, I think this How is How long the, is it for you door to door? Because for me, it's about two hours and 40. I'd say it's about two hours, 2.15 maybe. Like, if we're, if we're literally talking from my door to the Hilton, yeah. where it's always been, it takes me about two hours, 15. And I think, you know, the London-centric nature, I mean, a lot of people I know sort of talk about video games events and go across the UK as like, why, why are video games events so London-centric? And what I would just say is, society is London centric unfortunately yes it's not video games events that are specifically causing the problem here it is unfortunately years and years of government policy um, so uh, you know it's one of those things where I get the advantage there in terms of that which is handy um, but then the flip side is that um, I'm looking at my mortgage next year and seeing what that's going to be like for a one yeah. place in London and uh, I personally want to tar and feather Liz Truss it's, uh, I would um, start playing the lottery if you have if you haven't already. Absolutely. I've, yeah, I've decided like uh, hope is a strategy, uh, <laughs> and I think you know just gonna go and pile on the lottery <laughs> ticket. But yeah, I, I think like getting down to develop. I think it's relatively straightforward uh, for me. It's and it is actually more straightforward in a sense for a lot of people because there is an airport as well that's sort of local if you do need yeah, to drive yeah. from further. Gatwick's just um, up the road. Also, it's just bright. It's just nice. You know, it's much nicer this year. Yeah. Um, because there's a bit of a breeze, which probably is messing with the audio yeah. recording a little bit. But at the same time, last year was very hot and very stuffy, and yeah. the air was quite still, and it was just not a. And the, air conditioning, to be. and the air conditioning didn't work in the hotel either. So it was a very yeah. horrid environment. I remember, I, I joked about this last night, like when I was here, I got so uncomfortable in the heat one time. My partner was with me when I was down yeah. um, last time just yeah. because they were like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll come to Brighton. It's like, you know, Tommy's paying. Let's go and doss about in the Let's, let's go doss about in the lanes. Why not? Um, and we ended up, we went, we were like, oh, do you want to go and see a movie? So we ended up going in, into a movie just for the air conditioning for a bit. Which I think is fair. Yeah, which I, was, yeah. I, can, I can remember the expo room was upper floor as well, which yeah. didn't help. And it wasn't particularly well ventilated. No. So that, which, was, that was horrible. You know, at a time when... Um, well, it's not gone, yeah. but certainly COVID was far more prevalent 12 months ago versus yeah. now. Yeah. And um, yeah, there was actually, I remember chatting with a couple of friends who were showcasing their game literally at the back in a dead end corner. Yeah. And they were, they looked like they were going to pass out. And I'm like, God be with you, I am out. I am not coming back in here again. Yeah. And I didn't go back in the expo floor for the rest no, of the that's week. that's it. I'll be honest, I did not pull uh, particularly strong shifts on the games I'd stand last year. <laughs> uh, because I was like, oh, I've, I've got all of these meetings not in here. <laughs> Bye, see ya. Um, whereas this year, it's, it seems not it's not pleasant. It's not as bad. It's still hot and uncomfortable, I yeah. would say, but definitely not as bad as it was. I would say summer in Britain, hot and uncomfortable. Yeah. In which it's a country that, uh, as long as you're somewhere in the middle, it's fine. But if you even creep slightly to the extremes of cold or heat, whole yep. country falls yep. apart. There yep. you go. The life as, as, as we were discovering in our, in our new house that we moved to not that long ago, yeah. um, it is getting uncomfortably hot at times. 
We haven't experienced the winter yet. Yeah. But um, one of the <laughs> one of the problems with making YouTube videos is I went away and bought myself a nice machine last year so that yeah. I can do a lot of my video production at a much higher, much faster rate, yeah. and it's wonderful. It's great. It's got all this, all these fans and liquid cooling systems, so it runs nice and cool. But it all has to pump the hot air somewhere. Yeah. I mean, and, I, I, you've essentially just put it in a hot box. Yes. Right, and into... so my office isn't great at venting heat yeah. at all. And actually, the way that the roof is built, it actually kind of like is is actually hot boxing me. And so there was a couple of times where I, um, I was just sitting working on a video and I'm yeah. like, okay, cool, I'm gonna put that to render. And I'd go downstairs and make a cup of tea because of course, even though it's sweltering hot outside, I'm yeah. still drinking tea. Or I'd do something else and then I'd come back and I'm like, oh my God, this room is just uncomfortably hot. Yeah. Yeah. And then I look on, on the, the temperature gauge on the computer and it's like, balmy 32 degrees, so it's fine. And I'm like, oh my God. It's just like <laughs> dripping, dripping. Yeah, like, that, that people was... better subscribe off the back of this video. Yeah, like that was, um... I'm sweating for my craft. Oh, so what did I do last year? It was something at Ubisoft's offices in Guildford. Um, I think it's due to TV. They did. Oh yeah, recording. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they did a. Rec I, I was on a recording on that, and I've got to say they did it on not the hottest day of the year, but it was during that week where right, it was that like week. It, that week where it crept up to forty at one point. Uh, tin I foil on all the windows. Yeah, like I, I think it must have been about thirty six, and they had a room which they had the lights all set up. I was going to say, can't have windows or anything in terms of like soundproofing they picked the one that didn't have any of that so they could properly sort of dress the set and everything like that i walked into there and it's like i've been in cooler saunas and <laughs> uh the, the difference is, is that i've been in cooler saunas but saunas last you know normally you sort of like dip in and out 15 minutes, minutes, 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Tops. Yeah, yeah what you don't normally do is sit in there for uh an, an initial hour and then spend another 30 minutes doing all the pickups and all of the intros and doing the alternative takes. Uh, but the problem being is that they presumably couldn't use any of the later alternative takes because we were all caked in sweat. So if they sort of suddenly sort of cut one in for like one of the earlier bits of the video, it's just you'd sort of see someone go from basically composed, calm, considered to a disgusting, sweaty mess. Um, but yeah, I think it's uh, it, it's much nicer this year, Yeah, which is, uh, which is a good one. And of course, the ice cream van's back out, which oh, is yeah, which I've, is nice. I've already rated that. Yep. Pretty Likewise, much. Pretty much. it was like 11 a.m., but like, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Like there's there's no wrong time for gelato. Mm. Or in this case, not gelato, just Mr. Whippy. Yeah, yeah. I did get some gelato at the Raise the Game last night. Oh, nice. That That's was good. good. That's good. Yeah. That was that hit just the right spot. Actually, I was just at that point in the night where I'm like flagging a little. Like, no, nope. just a little a little hint of something sugary. Not you go. That's the reason. That was just enough to get me back to the Airbnb and then pass out and then pass out. There we go. Quality night. But yeah. So what's up for yourself the rest of today then before? Uh, meetings, 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 uh, <laughs> and then off to the awards. Um, and I think at some point I need to steal an iron and ironing board off someone. Okay. So, because uh, I've got my shirt in my bag because I was going to come down in my shirt and suit jacket and was like, no. No, that's a video terrible event. idea. One, is a video games event, and two, I was already sweating at the moment I put the, the, the shirt on. I was like, <laughs> this is not, this is not going to hold. Like, the, the center will not hold on this. So uh, instead, I've got a strong desire to go and grab myself an ironing board at some point, give that shirt an iron, uh, then do a sort of Superman style change. And then I'll be back on a train out at like 11 tonight. Nice, nice. There we go. Let's see. I've just got, I think, a couple of meetings this afternoon, and then that's it, which is, I feel like my day's a little bit more relaxed, yeah. but it's more spread out, because I'm spread out. To, which is good. And as you know, I came in for some lovely meetings that just did not happen, so I had my that's relaxation true, yes, first, yes. accidentally, uh, <laughs> and now I've got um, the actual stuff that pays the bills, so to speak. I was going to say, because the, the, the most fun uh, meeting is now concluding, I by know, and large, I know, but absolutely. so we'll have to start heading down. We're going to have to head back, but yeah. it's been good. Always a pleasure to see you. Absolutely. So when was the last time we saw each other? IRL. I don't know. I didn't see you at WSD, did I? I think, yes, we did. Oh, it was like flash in the pan, yeah. two minutes. There was, a, there, was a, there was a brief point where we sat down where Loading Bar had invented a game. Yes. On the side yes, of the yes, beer. yes. We hung we out played, for, we, for like, we played the beer game. No, I, I was like, oh yeah. Did I see you there? No, we actually sat down and we, had a we, drink together we, for about two hours. Yeah. <laughs> like, but the important thing, Tommy, is we're getting old. We're getting old. That's it. That's it. It's just like we can't remember this stuff. But it was a good beer. And uh, it was a good beer. I always recommend our friends at Loading. 
just about anything. Mm. Well, we keep talking, we're going to do a, a beer cast at some point, which we should probably we chat should. to our friends at Loading About. Yes, we should do. And when uh, when the Mario film comes on streaming, because I couldn't be bothered to go to the cinema. Did you know, have, you, have you actually not seen well, it? Well, so I've got to be honest with you, Tommy. There was one um, there's one problem with the Mario Bros. movie, which is being a man in his mid 30s going to the cinema by himself. It's so, not, not the one that you pick to go to. So, funnily enough, like, um, I ended up going to see it after it was out a few weeks. Yeah. But it was uh, our mutual friends, uh, Matthew Syrett yeah. and Ben Ridge. Yeah. And um, the reason that we went was <laughs> so. Uh, ben um, recently got married. Yep. Congratulations to Ben. But um, it was his partner's hen do that weekend. Lovely. So he's like, oh, I've got nothing to do. Is anyone up for anything? Like, yep. do you want to go get a bite to eat and go see the Mario movie? And this so is... a bunch of guys in their mid-30s all go down <laughs> to catch at 8 o'clock Saturday night show in a Mario. It's, 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 it's the combination of both strength and numbers, but also the games industry's interpretation of lads, lads, lads. <laughs> is quite different to the recent interpretation I had at a recent stag do which I, I'm not going to go into details but involved too much time in tents and canoes oh god yeah but yeah. yeah not great not great but but yes we'll have our we'll have our Mario catch up as well at some point we we'll also need to try and find Quang because I know Quang's here yeah I think I think find Quang hunt him down yeah and uh, tell him get on the podcast man he did record an episode with me a couple of weeks ago. So no, we had a really good chat with the Bitmap Bureau. Instead, which... say, instead say thank you for doing the podcast. Oh, there you go. I'll we'll tell him that. Change, uh, change course. But yes, we'll do that. And uh, yeah, and then I'll be back on to talk about fun policy stuff. All the things that you love to talk about. And everyone else goes, oh my goodness me, not this bloke again <laughs> talking to me about M&A. Oh, good God. Oh but, no, the Activision Blizzard thing reared its ugly head again. Exactly. exactly. Um, we'll be done soon enough. Ah. Anyway, all right. Love to see you, Tommy. And you. And uh, and uh, we'll catch everyone later. We'll do the official preamble when I get back in the house. I'm going to sit and record some outro for you. But oh, have French a good one. Lovely. Oh, windswept and interesting. Oh. As always. And that's it for this episode of Branching Factor. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the two of us ramble on. Uh, quick m message just to say that we will be returning to our regularly scheduled programming as of the next episode. Everyone is, we're no longer out on the road all the time. Uh, so we'll actually be recording back here in our respective offices and bedrooms and what have you. And we've already got a couple of fun guests lined up between now and the end of the year. And so with that, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed listening to us. By all means, feel free to reach out to us, send us comments out on socials. You can email us at branchingfactor at aiandgames.com if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns or existential crises that you would like to have relayed to us. And of course, come and hang out at the AI and Games Discord server where we will have conversations about all the episodes that are published. And yeah, without further ado, I'm going to start playing the outro music and I'll see you all soon in the next episode of Branching Factor. Catch you later. The Branching Factor podcast is hosted and produced by me, Tommy Thompson, with support from Anne Sullivan, George Osborne, Mike Cook and Quang Yoon. Our theme music is provided courtesy of Ben Ridge, the logo and thumbnail are is thanks to Helen O'Dell. Special thanks to Shraddha Gupta and Phoebe Trigg for additional production support. And of course, to all of you out there listening. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Branching Factor. Wherever you are in the world, be sure to stay safe, have fun, and we will be back.